Well, welcome one and all, Peterborough Methodist Circuit, lovely to be with you this morning. Sunday the 9th of October 2022, I say this morning, it's actually this afternoon where I am, but as you know, we pre-record, this is an act of worship that starts here as I reflect on the readings and prayers for today, as I listen to Nick and Zoe sharing their reflection. And as I understand, you'll be joining me later. As you can see, we've got the readings for this week. Jeremiah 29, Psalm 66, 2 Timothy 2 and Luke 17. It's Luke 17 we'll be focusing on in the main today. I will beginning though with Psalm 66, praise for God's goodness to Israel. Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Go on. I dare you, make a joyful noise wherever you are. You know us, we're here for you. Especially remembering those who can't make church because they are unwell themselves, caring for others. Uh, perhaps you've got challenging shift patterns at work. It's still lovely to be able to join you. I'll just be lining things up, preparing for us over the next couple of minutes. Do make sure you're saying hi to each other in the comments section. And above all, put those prayer requests in. Whether you're joining us live or whether you're joining us after the event, welcome, good to see you. The picture here that you're able to see is James Tizzo, 1836 to 1902. Jesus healing those who have leprosy. I'm not quite sure what to make of this picture. It's rather neat, rather tidy. All the clothes look very rich, look very lavish. Even the bandages, beautiful whites. But nonetheless, there's elements of this that say something as those lie prostrate before Jesus. And also I notice the bandaged feet in the bottom right of the frame. Courtesy of Wikipedia, it's at the Brooklyn Museum. Public domain. And I need to declare it's public domain in the United States separately as well. So I'll be joining with you shortly with our reflective videos. Welcome folks, lovely to have you with us.
Greetings, folks. Lovely to see you. Hope you're doing OK. Welcome to Morning Worships. Lovely to have you with us wherever you are. And yes, you might have seen on that reflective video, as we remember, the lifeblood of Christ that flows through us. We are one body, even though we are in different places and there's more to church than just being on there on the Sunday. There's the live stream as well. There's small groups who might be in involved in churches 24 7 but as usual this is for you in particular if you're struggling to get to church uh, this Sunday because perhaps you're unwell in yourself or you are working really awkward shift patterns or you're caring for somebody else well this is just for you uh, but I have to say that the content that is produced for us here well it's more than just content this is inspired prayed through material that we hear as and we're going to hear from Nick and Zoe today they've got a reflection on gratitude based on the gospel reading it's great to be with you and to join with you today now I thought we might begin with a psalm I thought we might begin with psalm 111 uh, which is the psalm that's set for uh, today in the readings and it's a psalm as we give praise for God's wonderful works praise the Lord I give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation great are the works of the Lord studied by all who delight in them full of honour and majesty is his work and his righteousness endures forever he has gained renown by his wonderful deeds the lord is gracious and merciful he provides food to those who fear him he is ever mindful of his covenant he has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations the works of his hands are faithful and just and his precepts are trustworthy they are established for ever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Well, folks, we gather before a mighty God. Pray with me, please, as we pray through this psalm. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the greatness that we are able to see around us, how you have done marvellous things in creation, in the lives of others, in our own lives. We honour you this day. We recognise that life is lift to its best when we center our hearts on you we thank you for our relationship our covenant with you we thank you for your mercy we thank you for our heritage as we remember that we stand and walk in the footsteps following the same path that others have trod and that others have found sustains them through the days through the months through the years we thank you for how you redeem us you create us into the people that you intended us to be holy and awesome is your name indeed lord and as we reflect on the fear of the lord we rejoice that we need not fear your judgment your wrath we rejoice how you for how you long to embrace us but we also acknowledge the fact that we are sat before you and your great power we are moved. We recognise how you hover over our lives. Lord, may we continue to live faithfully in your sight. And we thank you for your blessing. Now and in the future. Amen. Amen. Now, it's been a really exciting time if you've been able to watch us on live stream. One of the things that I've done in particular is just to look back at Icing Worship, who provide our worship material. And every now and again, 
I look back and I listen and I, re -re I record uh, perhaps songs that might not be new, but the versions will be new to us. And it's all new today, folks. We're going to listen to two songs. You probably know them. Um, Jesus be the center and strength will rise when we wait upon the Lord. And then following that, I'll introduce uh, Nick and Zoe, who are going to bring the gospel reading and a reflection together. And that's on gratefulness, how we are grateful to God. We show gratitude for the great things that God does. But for the moment, we centre our lives on God and we remember how our strength will come from him. Two songs back to back.
I don't know about you, but I found that just so inspiring, encouraging, and uh, just pray that, yeah, you found that helpful as uh, well. We're going to turn now to our gospel reading for today, and it is from Luke chapter 17, verses 11 to 19, as per our opening picture and our opening title. Uh, but we did look at this briefly as part of our live stream prayers, and that would be on Monday. So if you do want to go back and hear a different kind of reflection on this, then uh, feel free. Uh, one of the the things that came up when we talked about this, and indeed Nikki, who of course, Nikki Ward, who works for the Leprosy Mission, uh, kind of highlighted this. I'm using the Oremus Bible browser here and really grateful for the service that Oremus use and enable us to have access to the Bible online. It's got some really helpful features that make reading clear, but it's actually um, the New Revised Standard Version and it's an anglicized, anglicized edition. Uh, 8995. Now, I always am reminding people that beware the titles here aren't necessarily in the original text. They're put there by other people. Um, and we noticed this title and we were slightly uh, uncomfortable with it. Jesus cleanses 10 lepers. Well, uh, Nikki immediately said, can, can we avoid using the term leper or labelling someone in that way? Um, and, and we immediately thought, wouldn't it be easier if the title said Jesus Jesus cleansed 10 people who were suffering with leprosy, you know, put the people in front of the condition rather than the other way round. And I think that's quite right. And interestingly, whilst we were online, uh, Bonnie uh, from Dogsthorpe was reading, I think, the NIV and said, oh, that's exactly what's happened in the NIV. So it's um, it's a very moving story. I'm going to let uh, Nikki and uh, Zoe, sorry, and Nick. That's interesting. Just renamed Nicky. Nick, Nicky. I bet he's pleased about that when he sees this go out. Um, uh, this, this is live worship, live reflection. Um, suffice to say, I don't want to, I'm really interested and I'm hearing this first time round as well. Apart from I know that the video is working and the audio is good. Um, we're going to listen to Zoe uh, and uh, Nick. And Nick will be presenting, but Zoe also reads for us and they're talking and, I, and I've gathered that the, that the focus is on thankfulness and, and, and giving thanks and showing appreciation. Uh, but uh, I'll let them uh, tell the story. Good morning, friends. It's wonderful that Zoe and I can be sharing worship with you this morning. Our reflection on thanks. As I think back to the weekly NHS Clap for Heroes during the COVID pandemic, I reflect how short-lived my attitude of gratitude can be as we become quick to grumble about GP waiting times and face-to-face -face appointments. Perhaps this stems from grumpy memories in childhood box day thank you letters to aunts and grandparents thanking them for thoughtful Yuletide gifts. Arguably, these limitations to our gratitude levels are not, not restricted to gifts and our wonderful NHS, but also, and perhaps more importantly, to our Heavenly Father. It's certainly not a new issue. Jesus reflected in Luke chapter 17, verses 11 to 19, and I'm reading from the Message Bible. It happened that as he made his way toward Jerusalem, he crossed over the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten men, all lepers, met him. They kept their distance but raised their voices, calling out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Taking a good look at them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And they went and while still on their way became clean. One of them, when he realised that he was healed, turned around and came back, shouting his gratitude, glorifying God. He kneeled at Jesus' feet, so grateful. He couldn't thank him enough. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus said, were not ten healed? Where are the nine? Can none be found to come back and give glory to God except this outsider? And then he said to him, get up on your way. Your faith has healed and saved you. Amen. So why is an attitude of gratitude so important? 
From early beginning, mummy teaches baby to express thanks. Say ta are the first words in an infant's vocabulary. This reflects the importance in human parenting of thanks and good manners being passed on to the next generation. According to psychologists, the words thank you are no longer just good manners. They are also beneficial to the self. Modern day psychological research recognises the advantages to an attitude of gratitude. It is strongly and consistently associated with greater happiness. Gratitude helps people feel more positive emotions, relish good experiences, improve their health, deal with adversity and build strong relationships. Indeed, positive psychology states, feeling grateful every day keeps the envy at bay. An attitude of gratitude means making the conscious habit of expressing appreciation on a regular basis for big and small things alike, such as our relationships, health, business, material items, food in our cupboards, running water in our homes, and our overall sense of well-being. But what of this importance within biblical teaching? Well, Google says that the concept of giving thanks comes up 102 times in the Old Testament. And this word thanks is used 72 of those times. In 1 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 34 we read, Acknowledging what is right about God in praise and thanksgiving. Thanks must be important to God. Lisa Apello talks about the 12 benefits of gratitude our Father wants for us to know about. And you can read more in detail if you want to. But I'd like to just to share three of these that spoke to, spoke to me most. Firstly, gratitude brings peace. Count your blessings, not just sheep. We are told to get rid of the worry keeping us up at night. Gratitude helps us to see that God's hand is over all circumstances. And God tells us when we give him our thanks, he gives us supernatural peace. We read in Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Secondly, gratitude defies Satan's lies. Satan is so wily. He whispers that God isn't good and that he's withholding good from us. But his schemes as old as the Garden of Eden. When he questioned Eve, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? And when Eve responded, only the tree of good and evil was off limits. Satan suggested God was keeping good from them. You will not certainly die, for God knows when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. In a garden that was perfect, that produced abundantly without work or weeding, and where every single plant but one had been given to Adam and Eve, Satan focuses on that that was missing. True gratitude for God and the abundance he gives protects us from caving into the enemy's lies. In, in Psalm chapter 84 verse 11 we read, No good thing will he with, 
withhold from those who walk uprightly. And thirdly, gratitude is a testimony. When we thank God openly and acknowledge what he's done for us, we proclaim a personal, caring God to the world around us. We show that contentment and peace come from not what we have, but who we know. In Psalm 105 verse 1 we, we read, Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. Developing a grateful heart brings incredible blessing. And I know many of us reflect and remind ourselves of God's goodness to us by using blessing jars and journals. In closing, I'd like to share the words of the well-known German Lutheran pastor and theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who certainly had a God-inspired attitude of gratitude. He said this, in ordinary life, we hardly realise that we receive a great deal more than we give, and that it is only with gratitude that life becomes rich. Amen. Thanks there to Zoe and Nick. Well, what are your thoughts on that? Pop them in the, the comments section. How's that moved you? Perhaps there's something that Nick said that sort of shook you to the core and, and in a hopefully in a in a in a way that uplifted you, you know, was a real sense of uh, encouragement. I was particularly moved by the focus on gratitude. It's about a mindset. It's not a mindset that kind of dismisses everything that's not right, but it is a mindset, I think, that recognises what is positive. And of course, you could always be a glass half empty person or a glass half full person but I think there is a real danger if uh, you are constantly in that sort of only glass half full mindset so that really speaks to me another thing that spoke to me I've not heard about the blessing well I have heard about the blessing jars and various ways in which people register something that they're thankful for and you see how much you overlook um, and how much that adds up so to speak that you would you would just not see but one thing is journaling which is recommended as part of our methodist way of life and particularly i found journaling helpful uh, to sort of tease out when i've sort of been struggling and i've tried to weigh up pros and cons to actually write something down on a piece of paper and to journal and to to give thanks i mean i may well have been sort of surveying a particular scenario and i think well i start off and i think well to what extent um, do I feel negative about this? And it might begin by being, you know, my negativity is at, um, you know, if one is the lowest scale, I might be feeling three out of 10 about this situation. And then I write down all the negative things I can on one side. Uh, but on the other side, I write down all the things that I'm thankful for, all the positives and all the pieces where the, where the, where the light of Christ is beginning to shine and all the things that I'm thankful for on the other side. And then I look at the two lists and I look at the things that I, where I have gratitude and I then adjust that figure. And invariably it goes up from, say, a three. And I might say, well, it might not be rosy. I might be at a five or a six. But the point is that it goes up and it doesn't have to go up very much. And it does, does have an impact on how you're thinking and how you're perceiving, because it's very easy to kind of be focused on the negatives and, and not on the positives. And there's something very powerful in that. And um, above all, there's positives in the gospel. Now, the second thing I wanted to say to you is that um, Nick uh, referred to a particular article that he found helpful, Lisa Apello. And uh, Lisa's work is available at lisaapello.com. So it's A -P -P -E -L -O. Now, I've called up the website here. Now, I do have to be sort of uh, careful and prudent here in that I'm saying that obviously as a Methodist church, we we come across a whole range of material and it's not I'm not here to endorse what um, Lisa Apello is doing, but I'm here to simply just reflect that this is something that Nick found very helpful. And I'll scroll down for you because there's a little bit more there. I can't resist. Uh, gratitude glorifies God. Uh, gratitude helps us to see God. Gratitude puts us squarely in God's will. 
Gratitude brings peace. Gratitude draws us to God. Gratitude brings contentment. Gratitude deepens faith. Gratitude leads to joy. Gratitude defies Satan's lives. I have to say that one interests me. Um, and then gratitude guards against envy. And then it's even more. Gratitude helps us to live in the present. And gratitude is a testimony. And so I'd like to thank Nick for drawing our attention to Lisa Apello's work. As I say, if you're interested to find out more, lisaapello.com. But uh, something that um, has encouraged Nick. And obviously, I can't endorse the adverts that's popping up there. Uh, for a certain mail order company so yes i hope that you uh, enjoyed that folks um we're going to listen now to uh forever and then we'll come back and we'll join together and we'll have a time of prayer it seems obvious doesn't it a time of thanksgiving uh for 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 what we want to thank god for as we survey our lives so but in the meantime have a think about the positives that you can give thanks to god for whilst we listen to this song forever Forever God is faithful. I'm going to return to the gospel reading now. We're going to use the gospel reading to focus our prayers. And I did say, yes, have a think for yourself about where you are thankful. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a pointer now. Uh, so here's our gospel reading. And uh, as I read through it, I notice how, firstly, um, we rejoice in the healing of those who are carrying leprosy. Ten people healed from leprosy and so we thank god in this moment for the healing that we know now i realize that um we journey we all carry the cross and that for some of us we carry the burden of a particular health condition or some of us aren't necessarily getting any younger but of course we understand healing in the broadest sense of the word uh, we think about it in terms of healing and wholeness. And healing here is a healing away from uh, being separated and from, from society because of the impact of leprosy 
on the day they the, the those carrying leprosy were outcast so we thank god for our physical healing we thank god for our spiritual healing and the wholeness that we have and we thank god for our communities uh, where we're able to care and others are able to care for us so i'm going to allow a time of silence between each of those and if you want to add any particular reflection or name anyone that you're thankful for then please feel free to do so so lord in this space uh, we give thanks for our healing we give thanks for our physical healing and for those who care for us and for the skills and expertise of doctors and nurses we give thanks for them. And when I say thank you, God, well, I invite you to re repeat that. Thank you, God, perhaps in the comments section. So thank you, God. Lord, we give thanks this day for the wholeness that you bring us. We give thanks that we are able to walk life not alone, but in relationship with you, in covenant with you, as we think back to our psalm as well. We thank you that we are able to fulfil your purposes. We are able to enrich others and to be enriched ourselves, to flourish wherever we are. Be with us as we journey. Thank you, God. And we give thanks for the communities to which we belong and the communities, therefore, that hold us. Perhaps you'd like to write down the name of your own church or the, the name of your own small group. Maybe it's a community of friends you'd like to thank God for, but the fact that we are no longer separated, that God brings that unity, that fellowship, that koinonia, to use a Greek word. That fellowship is more than just being down the pub or being praying, pray, you know, meeting with a group of friends who have a common interest. We are bound together by the Spirit. Thank you, God. As I read here, we thank you for that healing that it continues for our life as we go about our work, as Jesus says to those who are suffering go and show yourself to the priests and as they turn and go they find their healing we give thanks for the presence and the power of god as we go about even the most mundane tasks and the surprising thing about the story is how that it was the samaritan that came back because don't forget that You would be an outcast firstly because you were carrying leprosy, but a double outcast because you're a Samaritan. Because of the racism that exists between Samaritans and the contemporaries of Jesus' day. And it's the Samaritan who would have been despised by others, judged by others, seen as being unworthy in God's eyes. The Samaritan, just as in the story of the Good Samaritan, who actually gives a demonstration of what it is to have one's heart in the right place. And he here is the demonstration of what it is to be thankful. He's the only one that returns. So we thank you for people who surprise us with their thanksgiving and their generosity to us and their acknowledge of perhaps what we have given. And Lord, we pray, yes, for our faith, 
that you would strengthen us today. In Jesus' name. Amen. It may well be that you want to reflect here on stories that you've heard on the news, radio, television or read in the newspapers. And now is the time for you to lay down, for us to we gather together and we lay down and are mindful of the needs of our world. As we think about the ongoing conflict between Ukraine and Russia, North Korea, South Korea. As we think about Palestine. And as we think about where we have situations where there is enmity between people and yet there is the capacity for, for those who are open to God to find reconciliation and to see the humanity in each other. Lord, we pray for peace and where there is conflict for an end to violence and war, for negotiations to open up and for people to recognise the humanity in each other's. Particularly in Ukraine and Russia, we pray that both sides would observe the Geneva Convention. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray and reflect on our environment, particularly as we think about the Nord Stream pipeline that has been sabotaged and the release of methane gas. Lord, we pray that despite the challenges of the increased cost of living, and rising inflation, that you would help the leaders of countries to work together for the common good in addressing climate change. As we think about the resources before us and those in need, we pray for those who are hungry. We pray particularly for those in our own country who are visiting food banks and seeking shelter. We pray for our churches as we think about how we open up warm spaces, how we meet the costs of that, how we work in partnership. And we think and reminded that we journey with churches across Europe and the world who seek to show what it is to love God and love our neighbour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord, on this day, remember all who grieve. We pray that your blessing would be with them. We pray particularly for families who are preparing for the funeral of loved ones. We pray for our own royal family and our nation as we reflect on the life of Queen Elizabeth II. We pray for our King. We pray mindful of ongoing reflections of the nature between monarchy and state and monarchy and church. But above all, help us to remember that we are all equal in your eyes. So Lord, we ask these prayers in the name of Jesus and we pray that you would help us to see the world through your eyes, see the potential and the positives around us. Help us to give thanks. Help us to be a people whose, whose glass is half full and have people that anticipate how you will fill up our glass to overflowing as we look forward to that heavenly banquet. Amen. Let's say together 
the Lord's Prayer, folks. Uh, I'll begin with our Father in the usual way. And as is our live stream tradition, we'll say the Lord's Prayer quietly ourselves, wherever we are. And I encourage you to say Amen yourself, or especially if you're able to write Amen in the comment section. That's wonderful. We get that sense of journeying. Our Father. Amen. So as we close, we shall sing Chain Breaker together. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles If you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies if you're trying to fill the same old holes inside There's a better life There's a better life If you got pain He's a pain taker If you feel lost He's a way maker If you need freedom for saving He's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. There's a better life if There's a better life If you got pain He's a pain taker If you feel lost He's a way maker If you need freedom Or saving He's a prison shaking savior If you got chains but well, he's a chain breaker can feel it somebody testify if you believe it if you receive it if you can feel it somebody testify testify if you believe it if you receive it if you can feel it somebody testify got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, then he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking chains, but he's a chain breaker. Thanks a lot, folks. Take care, stay safe, and the blessing of God be with you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Great sharing with you.